So just warming up, getting ready for the session. Leg swings, love them. Second half of the warm up starts to speed up, starts to do some strides. So I need my hip flexors to be in shape. Need to let the glutes know that they're doing the work. You want to be sweating by the time you finish the, the warm up and you want that first and second rep not to be a shock. I'll continue to repeat that, but. And this is getting to the first rep. New watch, so not as slick as usual, using the forerunner. And, and then the watch actually tells you what you're supposed to do, which is, I've not experienced that before, but it's linked to your phone. Second rep. Rest completed one minute. And I'm just completely focused on form, making sure I'm in control of my breathing, and then the heart rate will take care of itself. Always make friends with fighters. Next step. Run. Next step. The fan Run. there is an Three absolute 30. game changer. Like this is a big, big, big difference. It's only a small fan, but just keeps Rest the air moving Rest around me. Which makes a massive difference for me. Just looking at the back here, when I slow that down in slow-mo, I can see um, exactly what I've always seen when I'm running. Rest completed one minute. Um, and this from the side, uh, drink is there, which is always super convenient when you're on a treadmill. One of the great things about being on a treadmill. And then, not sure what rep this is, but we're starting to get on. Feeling it, and it's still it's still hot, but that fun makes a big difference. So 10 times 3.30, so we're working on that 17 minutes 30 uh, time for 5K. We're working at building volume at that. First six, 2% because I still need to give my body a little bit of uphill so it's not got that pounding on the quads that my quads are just not used to yet or not ready for. So that's important. Um, it also makes it easier for me to elevate my heart rate and sort of work harder, which I need right now, both building for the marathon and building for these KOMs. And it nicely hits the hill training. So going for those KOMs and the last four reps um, uh, were, were at 4%. So it's not a great gradient, but it's a step up. It's an easy step up from 2% to 4%. You're doubling the gradient, but it feels manageable. Um, and so that's feeding nicely into those KOMs. And I was looking at those KOMs yesterday. Uh... Okay, so here we go. This is rep one. Just sorting it out. New watch, Garmin Phoenix 8, all singing, all dancing, together with the Heart Rate Pro Plus, which is a different beast altogether. Obviously, getting serious. And then the session is 10 times 3 minutes 30. So the first six at 2%, so I'm still giving myself, I'm still giving myself that little bit of uphill just to get used to, more and more used to building volume at speed on the flat. And then the last four are at 4%. And what the Garmin Phoenix 8 also does is actually talks to the phone whilst you're doing the reps, which is interesting. So you'll be able to see here This is rep one. Okay, so as you can see, this is rep one, but I'm I'm already sweating. So the warm-up has taken me to a point where this first and second rep are not a shock to the body. And now I'm focused. I'm looking down at the pacing because if if in this gym I look ahead of me, it's a facade or fa facade or whatever they call them, and it's sort of um, sends me dizzy. So I wouldn't usually be looking that near to me ahead but I'm checking the data and I'm focused on being the best possible there's Faisal the best possible runner that I can be so I'm making sure the arms are coming up high enough my glutes are engaged and I'm feeling comfortable in my breathing so that I can pace the rep of 330 but I also know that then I can pace 10 of those and that's the important part so it's thinking about my cadence almost subconsciously um, thinking about stride length. Am I powerful? Do I feel it coming off the glutes? If I'm doing the work with the calves here, 
it's just not going to be sustainable. So as you can see, I'm, I'm totally focused on hitting this first rep, as I know that this sets the tone for the next nine. Everyone's working hard in this gym, loving it. Boxing training. It's funny, later on in the session, he's, um, his rounds on his phone, the ding ding, uh, is actually in sync with my intervals, which, was, which made me laugh a bit. But yeah, all in the zone there. This heart rate monitor is, it shows you everything, stride length, oscillation, your bounce, um, cadence, and lots of other stuff as well. And the watch is, it's new for me. Garmin gave me this quite recently. It's not an advert, but probably shows you more information than what you need. And I'm just checking it there because I've not used it for an interval session. I'm just, I'm just making sure that I can see the heart rate, which is what really counts for me. I'm making sure that I'm getting into the right zones. Although initially, this faster work, especially at 2%, which is essentially flat for me because I'm used to doing five to eight to 10%, Whilst I'm building volume at pace at this, it's, it's almost a skill session. So I'm not bothered if this still stays in zone three and it's just around 155, 160 beats. That doesn't matter. The point of this is that I'm getting used to, I'm getting comfortable at moving over the ground at the pace that I want to attack the 5K. In the very near future, attack the 10 miles in five, six weeks and attack the marathon. So, just forward this so you're not seeing everything. Okay. And then, if we just look at the simple stuff on Strava, then the, the thing that, this is the thing in relation to treadmill running. So, there's a lot of stuff that can be off, but both pace and distance on the treadmill. The treadmill itself can be, the calibration can be off. Um, the incline, incline or decline can be off. Uh, the watch almost is certainly off unless you've got a piece of technology that goes on the back of the treadmill and, is, and has been calibrated properly and frequently. So don't worry too much about the pacing as long as you're getting into the right zones. And this is what I'm thinking about right now. I know that it's there or thereabouts. Like, for example, if it's 15 kilometers on the treadmill, it, you're not going to be doing 16 and a half kilometers or 13 and a half. It's going to be there or thereabouts. And as long as you're staying consistent on the same treadmill, and you can see the effort level. It's good enough for me. Here, I'm watching the first six are at 2%. So I should see some consistency over there. So heart rate, 162. Cadence is 180. As I go through the reps, it's pretty much the same, the heart rate, 162 to 165. Cadence is starting to go up a little bit, 184, but nothing to worry about. It's literally 1%. As I get on to rep six, this is the final one on the 2%. This is 166, 186. Again, nothing to worry about. It's very, very similar. And the valleys, what it's coming down to, the heart rate, it's kind of like one. 130, 135, 127, 126. It's all good stuff. As I go onto the hills, so I've got to try and judge that so, so that I bring the pace down a little bit because the hill has essentially doubled from 2% to 4%. And then what I'm seeing is, you know, a little bit higher heart rate, so up above 170, which is fantastic. 170, 172, 173, brilliant. Uh, brought that back in, which is nice. And the cadence has gone up, as you see. So cadence is now 192, 190, 188, up to 194, I think it goes up to. 192. So from here, that's 10 steps per minute faster. But that's because I'm going uphill. And efficiently, you should be taking short stride lengths. Um, if you look at the Garmin Connect, this, again, it gives us so much data, more data than what we need. Forget about the pace, it's, you know, it's paced throughout. Average pace doesn't mean anything because it's not taken into consideration the 10 minutes stood around the treadmill, resting. Heart rates, this is exactly what I'm looking for. It's coming down nicely. I had a fan there this time, which made big, big difference. Um, and I'm bringing it back and I'm on these last four getting into it. What I'm also looking at here is the stride length together with the cadence. So we've just had a look at a glance at the cadence, but now all of a sudden, 140. Happy with that, 140, 142, 140, 140, 142, 
again, you know, it's, it's pretty consistent all the way through. What that means when your stride length is staying the same and your cadence is staying very, very, very close together means that you, your, your glutes are in good shape and you can handle this speed and you can handle the duration of the session, which is great to see. Um, and again, more data. There's a few things here that I'd look at. You know, this gives you the average data over the session. But again, it's 45 minutes, including 35 minutes of hard work, 10 times 3, 30, with a 60 seconds rest in between. So the averages, this would usually worry me. I'd usually like this to be sort of 49.5%, 50, all within a percent. And this looks a bit off, but you don't know what you're doing during, I might be doing some leg swings, etc., etc. you get it. Average stride length, again, it's off because it's not taken into consideration the, the work only in isolation. And I think this could be something can, Garmin can work on um, because it would be good just to see the work or each individual rep and then together. But you get the picture. 